Today I'll just be doing a quick demo on how to build a nice padded shipping box. Uh, it's also a box that's very handy to keep your work stored in, uh, so that when it's between shows, it's protected. Um, just to give you a sense, this is, I'm building the box for this frame, right? And eventually there's a panel that goes in this that will have a drawing on it. And um, it's already destined to go out to a show, so I need to build a box, so it's perfect timing. Right, mm -hmm. I have to do this. So um, anyway, I had a handout there that you might have picked up when you first walked in that kind of outlines uh, some basic things about the box that I built. Um, so in the little example here, it starts with um, a generic sort of panel that, or frame that measures 24 inches by 36 inches, and then kind of talks about uh, the additional math you have to do to kind of figure out um, how to draw your template. Mm -hmm. And you'll notice that it is basically, you're taking the size of the frame and it's gonna be packed in a box that is lined with three quarter inch uh, insulation foam, right? Uh, most places will not take uh, peanuts, right? Styrofoam peanuts, they say right on it, no styrofoam peanuts. Um, you, and bubble wrap, while it can protect things, doesn't add any sort of structural uh, rigidity to your box, right? Where this stuff will. Um, and it comes in big sheets and it's not too expensive. Uh, so in the little template here, it's saying that your piece is 24 inches wide, but when you go to do the box, you have to add three quarters inch for each side uh, on the side of the, the actual work. Um, but then you also are encouraged to add a quarter inch space into that as well, just to leave a little wiggle room in the box to make sure that your frame actually fits when you're done putting it together, right? So the basic things you need to build this box, uh, the primary thing, of course, is the cardboard, right? So this is a sheet that's already been cut in half. I've already built the lid just to save us some time. Um, I always get my cardboard through U-Line, all right, which is just uh, sort of a, a shipping supply company. And they sell these large corrugated pads, is what it's called. And you can get them, you know, all the way up to, I think, four feet by eight feet. Um, I normally buy my pads uh, at 48 inches by 60 inches, just because that length accommodates the vast majority of my work, right? So I, I try to eliminate waste off of my boxes. And the reason that you, it's really beneficial to do this is one, it makes making your templates and cutting them really, really easy. Um, back when I was in grad school, uh, the studio facility I worked in uh, was behind an old uh, furniture store. It used to be one of their warehouses and they annexed it to the university. Uh, but they still maintained a storefront uh, in, along the street in front of the warehouse. Uh, that got converted to the studios. So we'd always go dumpster dive for cardboard from mattresses and refrigerators and things like that. But then you'd wind up Frankensteining your box together and the more pieces of cardboard you tape together making your box, the less uh, stable it is, right? So having whole sheets to cut your box out of so you don't have any like seaming and taped together pieces, the better off you are. So anyway, I took my uh, piece there and I measured it and I already drew my template uh, so all it is is uh, for the bottom of the box, which actually holds the frame, uh, my frames when I make them are two inches thick, right? So I know there's going to be a three quarter inch piece of foam sitting underneath them. Uh, so technically this should be two and three quarters, but I don't want it to be over my work necessarily. So I always cut this at two and a half. Um, and then I have the extra three quarters, the width of my piece and other three quarters, and then my the other side of my box. Right. So it's pretty straightforward and simple. You just use a ruler right? and a measuring tape. Um, I always cut standing up because it just allows me to move through the motion a little easier. So I have a junkie wall that I cut everything on and I'll just hold it up. And you know, I don't sit here and try to line it up with anything. You know, you just like, cut it and make it happen, right? And you know, I know there's people out there that are you know, very anal retentive that are uncomfortable watching me do that. <laughs> you know, they want to hold up a ruler, you know, and they want to like cut along it perfectly. Uh, but this is a box, <laughs> right? So we don't need that degree of perfection. Let's 
So, uh, so that's a basic footprint for the box. Now when I go to actually cut these parts that become the side flaps, I just want to score the cardboard, obviously. But I am cutting through the corners. Uh, so I'll be cutting through that first length here until I hit the cross, and then I'll pull back out and I'll just score it. And then I'll cut through that. And if you're wondering, yes, I have tons of little cardboard squares in <laughs> my basement. Because I don't pick them up. I'm going to walk out of here today without picking these up. <laughs> That's what Ben's doing. That's pretty great. So voila. So I have my box all made, and then I can fold it along those score lines. Right? And then comes the next sort of important part, which is the taping. Now, when you go to start building your own boxes, right, you'll see this sort of tape everywhere. Um, don't buy this. Okay. You can buy it here on a big roll for about a dime more, right? You get about 100 times more tape. So invest in one of these things. Uh, you'll be really happy and you'll feel official. Cool to do that. <laughs> It has like a little guard to keep it from kicking back and blinding you. <laughs> because you'll be taping that quickly, you know. So, anyway, when I go to tape a box, it's its own sort of affair. Uh, because this thing is going to be, you know, traveling across the country potentially. Uh, and you want to make sure it doesn't just disintegrate on you. Um, so I'll always start by taping my corners. Again, I don't worry about being too pretty with this because, trust me, the first time you ship something and you get it back, your box will look a lot different. <laughs> It'll have like crazy gouges and weird marks all over it. Alright, so anyway, that gives me the shape of the box, right? So, you kind of have it set up. And but you have all these other open seams all the way around it that you want to tape. Um, and, you know, I believe in taping a lot. <laughs> People who have seen this demo before know that I never stop taping. So uh, I'll always do a double layer across the seams. Yeah, we have one former student that was, became a mummy. <laughs> a mummy after you short got carried away with your table. Yeah, someone I did uh, some messages from people who thanked me for the box demo and said they built boxes and sent me pictures of their boxes. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I was proud. And, and, and it was ridiculously taped. <laughs> Which is kind of archiving the work in a sense. I was I'll build one of these as soon as I'm done with a piece. Like before I know it's going, like this one I know it's going to the show, I have to ship it in another like, two weeks. 
So, but even if I didn't, I would still be building this box. You know? I was just thinking, though, if you weren't keeping, if somebody wasn't as skilled at scoring, it might be cut too far and break off. Uh, and so. you can always tape it back on, but once again, you go back to that golden rule of you want to have a lot less structural yeah. integrity as soon as you tape that crap on. You know, because the stress of it being handled is just going to wear it. Because I'll get these boxes back, and every now and then I'll just, most of the time I just retape them. So I'll go through and anywhere there's a gouge, I'll tape the gouge. Uh, I'll pull all the old stickers off. Um, and, uh, and if there's any sort of like softness in the corners, I'll normally go back in with another layer of cardboard and reinforce them and things like that. But anyway, so you think, oh, there we go, all the seams are covered, right? We're not done. Because we need more tape. So uh, I always tape along the front edges to kind of, just so you see where I'm going with this. One. So it kind of makes it look a little prettier and it cleans up the seam, right? And brings it further into the box. So I'll just kind of work all the way around. Almost went the wrong way. Is there an average lifespan of a box? No, I've had boxes. I've only had to replace a couple boxes ever entirely. And it was because when they were returned to me by UPS, they left them on my porch and then it rained. So I got home and my boxes were soaking. And luckily because of the foam lining, my work didn't get wet. But the boxes themselves were warped and messed up. And then I just thought to throw them away and buy a new one. I had one so badly done that I haven't kept Frankensteining it. And I've had some pieces that have gone out a lot of times. I do have some boxes that are pretty horrid looking. Uh, the reason being too is like the color of the tape changes, you know, depending on where you get it from. So I have like different colored brown tapes all over it. It's really pretty. So then you think, oh, well that's enough tape, right? No, that's not enough tape. So then I'll do the same thing around the whole corner of the box. I'm surprised it wasn't waterproof. It looks like it's almost waterproof. It's lovely. This is where having a gun roller is super great. Alright. So there we go. That's it. In all its beautiful glory. Right? But that's, you know, once it's all put together, it's going to be able to tolerate a lot. Right? So then the next part becomes uh, the foam lining. This, once again, it's just this pink panther three-quarter inch insulation, okay? Rated R4, so keep your warm, <laughs> keep your work warm in the winter, cool in the summer. <laughs> so uh, the same sort of thing with this stuff. It's very particular. So you'll see I measured all my pieces. I have two side rails that are actually the same length as this. You'll notice, right? Okay. And of course, that means it's going to be sitting on top of this by three quarters inch. So my two side pieces need to be minus that inch and a half, which is why those little cutouts are there. So if you've never cut this foam before, um, it's annoying. All right. Uh, your trick is to not even pretend that you're going to actually cut through it. So you just want to kind of push it in a good amount and drag it through there. A new blade helps. Same thing, who has time for rulers, not me. Right? And then you take it and you just snap it. Right? And it'll normally give you a pretty clean break. And then you can just score it along with that. So I will cut out these little pieces. You do want to peel the backing off this top. Um, 
Um, so those are my two little side pieces. And then my last two at the bottom. This guy uh, should just fit right in there. And normally I'll be uh, gluing this stuff in. Right? And I just use basic uh, wood glue. So that'll just fit right along the bottom. And then we'll have these two lengths that were cut to the same length as the box that will just go right here inside. Right? And then you'll have your other piece that goes right here along this side. Like a lot, so beautiful. And then you have your two uh, end cap pieces, which will fit in there like this and like this. So there's your nice padded interior, right? And as I mentioned before, I had already finished the lid, so it also has a piece of foam already inside of it, right? Uh, so then I'll be able to take this and then say, ah, I hope it fits. And, uh, this would all be glued in, by the way, as I said. But then it's like nice and snug as a bug in there. Right. And then, fingers crossed, this actually fits on top of it. Uh, and I do cut them kind of tight because I want them to be snug. My biggest fear is being realized, though, because I'm being shown. <laughs> like, <laughs> There's a demo on how not to do it. This requires a little wiggle. It's like catching on one scene. And there you go. Voila, shipping box. Okay. But there's some other little things that are important, which are these. Okay? So you'll want to make some of these. This up one I've had forever. I brought it in just to gross you out. <laughs> you see how much paint is built up on that? You know how many ups I painted with this up? <laughs> a lot of ups. And I always just use spray paint, like a standard sort of uh, acrylic rustoleum spray paint. And then I'll have a fragile. Uh, I have two. I use this one for littler boxes like this one. I have a bigger one that's a lot more gunky than this. Um, when I made, initially made it, my little spray shield wasn't big enough, so then I sprayed my fragile on and had a big glowing red <laughs> rectangle around it, so I added on to that. Uh, so you want to have that all the way around. So I'll be painting a fragile here and a series of ups along the side of this. And you're like, why do I need those ups? Well, if you don't, when they load the UOPS truck, they will set it like this. And then they will put a refrigerator on it. <laughs> all right, because that's what they do. So you do like this, and technically, they're supposed to... So that way, uh, when I tape this box shut, I'll be using this clear tape, not the brown tape. Right? So I make the box structurally using the brown tape, and whenever I pack it, I use the clear tape. And then they can see the seam of where the box and lid are meeting, and then they know that they're supposed to cut there. Now, the other thing I do is because I believe people inherently are stupid. <laughs> <laughs> including myself. I'm inherently a stupid human being. I put this on every side. Because even if they happen to get the box and they're like, whoa, wait, it says up the other way, well, it's open it here anyway. Um, then they'll just start jabbing into my box any way they want. So I actually take the time to put that on every one. I'm giving you the whole nine yards here, people. So I'll do this on every one. <laughs> And then you think that's it. No. I go one step farther because I'm like, maybe they don't understand where the seam is. So then I go in here with a marker. And I'll actually draw a line out and aim it down with a big black little arrow that says, I mean right here. <laughs> Cut this seam. <laughs> because I have gotten boxes back in the past. So it'll look like that. 
I've gotten boxes back in the past that were clearly cut open in Frankensteinian, non-logical ways. Right? So I tried to do this to save myself. And then, just so you know, like you want to be super efficient, in this lower corner, right? every time I will write uh, the weight, as soon as I'm done building it, I'll grab this box, I'll stand on a scale and see how much it weighs. I write that there. And then I write the length, the width, and the depth of the box. So it'd be this length, and the height, and then the width. And you always have to round it up. So in this instance, my box would be 32 inches by 24 by 4. Right? So I'd write 32 inches by 24 inches by 2 inches. Right? Because any time you ship the work, the two bits of information you'll always have to know is how much does the weight bo box weigh and what is its length plus girth. All right? And you want it to be under 130 inches or your life becomes really miserable. And then this is my last little thing that I add to all of my boxes. And this is my inventory number. All right? So when I'm done with this box, on the same corner where I have it marked, I will always put this big long tag, I'll coat it in clear tape. <laughs> and then when it's on my rack with all my other drawings, and I'm looking at the ends of them, right, I can identify what's in the shipping box very quickly by this number. And it goes to what's in your packet um, on the very last page. You will see this, which I decided to add to my little demo lecture here, so you kind of knew what that even meant. Because it isn't just a shipping box, right? It's a storage box. So whenever I get a piece done, I make this form. Um, it's kind of a bastardization of a form that comes in this art office book, right? And you look at this book, and you're like, I never want to own that book. <laughs> right? You look at the cover, and you're like, I'm an artist. I am not. Why do I need this weird calculator? <laughs> and that's what you think. Um, but uh, this inventory form, it allows me to put down the title of the work, uh, the inventory code, which is this. So this piece would be the fifth drawing I've completed in the year 2014. Now, why are those zeros there? One, to make me feel really bad about myself as a human being. <laughs> because I thought I would get to at least 100, and I only got five. <laughs> The other reason is because I don't want people to necessarily know what my code means. And uh, the more numbers, the less it looks like a date, in my opinion. So uh, that's why I do it. But I would write in this one. So as soon as I'm done, I'm going to write the title there. I have a little binder. That's nerdy. And then I write my inventory code. I wrote when I completed it. I guesstimate the time I spent on it, just so that I can think about that later when I price it. I list the medium, and then I list all the dimensions. The dimensions for the actual drawing, the dimensions of the work framed, and the dimensions of the shipping box. I also list the weight of the box, right? Because when I go to ship these things, trust me, when you get into it enough, you are tired of looking up this information every time you fill something out. And you're tired of going through your rack of drawings trying to figure out what's in what box, right? So this little form um, makes your life really good. And then, out of my own curiosity, I started adding more information to it to the point where now I want to have a record of the shows the work's been in. So I keep a running tally of how many shows it's been in, if it's been in any sort of publication, and then if I sell it to who and for how much. And then, the optimist in me, on the back of that form, has exhibitions continued. Exhibitions <laughs> continued. Because I have had pieces that have outlived you know, the list of six spaces that are on the form. Um, but this gives me, so whenever I'm looking for a show, or I'm looking at things to enter into a show, uh, not only does it give me some history of the work, where it's been, uh, what kind of shows I've entered in before, um, it gives me all the information I need to sit down and type up my UPS shipping labels, right? Uh, and then it makes my life really easy when I'm like, oh my god, I need to find those three drawings out of the, you know, 30 that are sitting on my rack. And I can just walk up and know that I'm looking for that. It makes it really simple. Are there any questions about that? I have one. 
Yeah. Do you also have a database in this, or do you just use the book? I just have a binder. Okay. Where I have tons of these photocopied, and I just write in them. Mm -hmm. You know. And then, in terms of my images, I put, I print them out on the two by three um, mailing labels, Avery labels. So I'll just print a little picture and slap it in there. And the reason I do that, or started doing that, is I realized I used to change the names of my work a lot. <laughs> so the picture helped me realize, oh, that one. <laughs> so that way, if I changed the name, I at least knew what piece that was, or what document that was in reference to. But that's really it. Um, these things are pretty sturdy. They handle shipping pretty well. If you don't build big, honking, sturdy frames like me, I would recommend um, building it kind of how I did, but give yourself a little bit more space and actually bubble wrap your frame, your work, and then stick it inside the padded box. That way you have two layers of cushion and you have some room between the actual structure of the box and the structure of the fame frame. Right now these are like one. Right, so there's no wiggling that frame inside this box. It's in there. So if it was a fragile frame, I wouldn't want that. Right, because then it could just break my frame. So that's when I would like leave that pocket in there, but then wrap it, almost like somebody would do maybe for a small sculpture. 